The Russian army has used chemical weapon in Mariupol. Mariupol is the southern city besieged by the Russians for over a month now and the Ukrainian marines and the Azov battalion have sworn to fight till the very last man. Ukrainians still hold most of Mariupol. The Russian failure to take this city has been frustrating the command structure so much that they have resorted to using a chemical weapon. The substance was dropped from a drone. Supposedly, the gas didn't have any smell or taste or color. It caused respiratory failure and vestibular ataxic syndrome, symptoms of which are vomiting, dizziness, headaches, and it can be deadly. It shows us the weapons in Russian arsenal, which are deportations, rape, chemical weapons, torture, and perhaps nuclear weapons. It all only just happened, so we're waiting for the Western response to it. My friends, I couldn't do these videos without the Patreons. I will now butcher your names on purpose. I'll name you 10 new Patreons. Watch out for ears bleeding, all right? Saying them as an Estonian. Ronando, Stephen Harvey, James Mullins, Uri Salomonovitk, oh God. Julius Pilletter, Andre da Silva Leplanc, Kanke Proxier, Samuel A. Wilson, Takahara Tanaka, Richard Kerbonneau. That's it, I hope you're still alive. If you like this channel or you like these videos, then you can support this channel on Patreon. Links in the description below. If you become tier 10 or above, I'll be reading your name as an Estonian. Thank you. Russians totally failed in the north. As we've talked about, the new objectives are to take Luhansk and Donbass oblasts. We can see how this is going. In this video, you can see a Russian tank column just standing there like sitting ducks, while the Ukrainian battle group K2 from the 54th Mechanized Brigades pounds them, destroying them one by one. Why are the Russian columns standing like this? It's not an isolated event. They actually are standing like this, like sitting ducks. It all comes down to communications. I was the communications guy, and without this, troops are blind. Russian communication system is very rigid. The command structure is very rigid, meaning that troops cannot decide what to do assessing the situation on their own. If they assess the situation on the battleground, they would have an idea what to do. They would still have to confirm it every time to up above. In the Western armies, the system is more flexible. In NATO units, troops have more maneuverability freedom. And if they see an action needing to be taken, in some instances, they can actually just do it without the confirmation coming from up above. In Russia, it's not like that. You have to sit and wait until your orders arrive. And that's what they're doing. They're sitting and waiting until Ukrainians just bombard the hell out of them. Russians are bringing their last active reserves to fight in Ukraine. For example, in this video, you can see a military convoy in Rostov, which is a close vicinity from the Ukrainian border in the east, heading towards Ukraine. We have information that Russia has brought the 5th Army, that's the army responsible for the far eastern border of Russia, to Ukraine. Meaning, last active reserves have been put into battle and Russian borders, almost everywhere, are undermanned right now. If Japan would decide to take back the contested islands, or if Finland would decide to suddenly take back Vipuri and Karelia, in poker terms, Russia is going all in with open cards. Because we know what they have. Political news from Moscow. Putin has started his first big purge. He has purged 150 FSB workers. They all lost their jobs and the head of FSB is not anymore under house arrest. Sergei Beseda is actually in Le Fortovo prison. These 150 purged agents were all responsible in some way for the failures of the Russian army in Ukraine. Putin is Stalinizing Russia, or now you could say Putinizing Russia using Stalin means of terror. United States satellite images show us a new massive Russian convoy. This time not north from Kiev, this time east from Kharkiv, moving towards Izium. That's the main attack direction to surround the eastern front of Ukraine. Convoy started yesterday from Velik Bulik, moving towards Izium, at least 10 miles long, hundreds of vehicles backed by artillery. 
But the Russians have still not learned. Still, they are only using big roads moving in one great line. But there's a reason for that, because in the past seven days, it has been heavily raining in that area. The fields and forests in eastern Ukraine are turning into swamplands. Russians are using pontoon bridges to cross rivers. We can see in this video that it doesn't work. Pontoon bridges are easily attacked by Ukrainians. You can cross them only one by one, it takes time. And Russian pontoon bridges seem to fail over and over again in Ukraine. And because this huge convoy is on the road, with the Kiev convoy we asked why are the Ukrainians not attacking it? Well, with this convoy they are. This convoy consists of scraped together last ditch units of the Russian army, of the Kiev front, some from the far east. How do we know this? Because we see tanks with two different engines. One type of an engine runs on diesel, the other type of an engine runs on jet fuel. You don't combine them in the battlefield, otherwise you need two different logistic networks transporting two different fuels. Russia has to do this because they just don't have enough one type of tanks on the battlefield. But their logistics are already and now they have to transport two different type of fuel. This gives us an idea of how desperate they are putting together different units and just sending them to die. Russia used its 29, that's how I pronounce it, Soviet era missile. They have been using their Iskander missiles, new modern missile systems, but they have been running out and they cannot produce anymore because they don't have the chips for it. They actually need chips from Taiwan and Taiwan is not exporting any to Russia. So they have resorted using these Soviet era 30 plus year old missiles that do work, but their range is relatively low. For example, this 29 air to surface missile range is 30 kilometers. And they used this 300,000 USD worth of missile to blow up an outhouse or, 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 or uh, an outside toilet. I guess they saw it as a logistics center for the Ukrainian army or the gathering point for Ukrainian Nazis and they had to destroy it. Well, I can only say this, shit happens. New York Times has been busy in Butcha. They have documented at least 40 dead bodies and in this photo you can see the locations. And Butcha had 400 dead bodies, so this is one tenth of everybody who was killed. Russians are heavily mining every area they are occupying but only in Kiev's vicinity. In the past 24 hours, 6,252 unexploded ordinances were found and diffused only in 24 hours. Mines are easy to produce, they're dumb weapons and they're easy to plant. Finland and Sweden both have their majority of parliament in favor of joining NATO. This is a first in the history. Never before in history have those two nations wanted to join NATO. They could be joining NATO as soon as summer 2022. And NATO has already announced that if they do join, the admissions process takes time. During that process, Article 5 already covers these two countries if they choose to join. It's a big thing because Finland has the longest standing border with Russia, 1,200 kilometers. And from the Russian side, that border is basically empty right now because everybody's dying in Ukraine. Anonymous keeps up the cyber war with Russia. They have leaked 600,000 Russian Federation emails and in those 200,000 were responsible for censorship of media. In Mariupol, already 10,000 civilians have died. Russia is using mobile crematoriums to burn the bodies, because if bodies are left outside for lengthened periods of time, they begin to rot and diseases begin to spread. So it's in Russian interest also to get rid of the bodies. Although they do it with a delay, the bodies usually stay on the ground for one to two weeks before they're cleared up. Some of the bodies are never cleared up. Mariupol is filled with them. Saboteurs on the Ukrainian side, well, at least against Russia, in Russia, have destroyed a railway bridge, as seen on this photo. This railway line was used to supply Russian troops around Kharkiv and Russian troops that attack towards Izium to surround the Ukrainian Eastern Front. Another attack on already worn out Russian logistics. Ukraine eliminated an entire battalion tactical group of Chechen fighters, Kadyrov TikTok soldiers, 
as seen on these photos. They all died in Donetsk. Russians and Chechens are horrible contact battles. I've actually never covered what is a battalion tactical group. Russia reformed its military some 10 years ago, turning their brigades into battalion tactical groups. So it's basically a brigade and this is what it consists of. You can see it on this photo. Poland signed a deal with the United States of America to buy 250 Abrams tanks. This is also connected to Polish deliveries of 100 T-72 to Ukrainians. Poland has said that it will deliver these tanks to Ukrainians as soon as they are replaced with the Abrams tanks. Unfortunately, the deliverance of Abrams will take a few years. So if USA can speed up that process, Ukrainian army will be getting tanks from Poland. Thank you for watching my friends. Thank you for picking a part in this information war. Until my next video, Slava Ukraini!